hi everyone welcome back to the channel today I want to take some time out to say welcome to all my new subscribers you know we've like Keisha Vanessa Camilla and Otis I just want to thank you for subscribing and welcome to the family anyway I want to also big up the old subscribers you've been here with me from the start just helping me along the journey you know and I appreciate you and you know there are even some guys that are regulars on the channel one of them said he longs to hear a story from me right Oshane <laughs> so today I will be reading a story and there's another guy Gabriel that likes to hear stories as well so this one is for people like you so today's story will be Two Lanterns by Diane Brown. Two Lanterns by Diane Brown. It was late. Jennifer and Peter stood at the window, looking out into the night. But they could not even see as far as the road. Everything was covered with fog. In all their lives, they had never seen fog like this in the mountains. It was like a thick white cloud hugging the ground. I wish Daddy would hurry up and come home, Jennifer said. I don't like the looks of this. He can't drive up the mountain road in this fog, Peter said. Maybe he won't come home at all tonight. Suddenly, there was a hurried knock at the door. Daddy, Jennifer shouted as the children ran to open it. But it was not their father. It was Mrs. Smith from the house down the road. She looked wet and frightened. Is your father here? She asked. No, Jennifer replied. He hasn't come from work yet. Why, what's happening? Mrs. Smith started to cry. It's the baby, she said. He is still throwing up. He will die by morning if I don't get him to the hospital. I was hoping your father could take us down. She sat down and put her head in her hands. I don't know what to do now. I wish we could help you, said Jennifer. Mrs. Smith got up and went to the door. I just have to try and drive our old van myself, she said. But you can't drive that heavy old van down the mountain road in this fog, Peter said. The tires are bad and it doesn't have any lights. Maybe so, said Mrs. Smith, but I have to try. I can't let my baby die. She opened the door to go. Fog came softly in like smoke. We will help you, Jennifer said. Go and get the two lanterns, Peter. Make sure they have enough kerosene oil in them. Hurry up. Peter got the lanterns and lit them while Mrs. Smith and Jennifer got into the van. Then they set out. Peter went in front with the lanterns. Mrs. Smith drove the van slowly behind him. But they could not hurry. The road was wet and slippery, and they had to think about the bad tires. Anyway, they could not go any faster than Peter could walk. Jennifer held the baby in her lap. She felt very frightened. The baby was very still. His little face looked old and thin, like a sick old man. Mrs. Smith kept the heavy van as near to the side of the mountain as she could. On the other side, the land dropped down steeply. It was very dark. They could just see the light from Peter's lanterns in front of them. Then they came to a sharp corner in the road. Peter went around it. When the van got around the corner, Mrs. Smith and Jennifer could see no light. Where was Peter? Mrs. Smith stopped the van. Jennifer gave the baby to Mrs. Smith and jumped out of the van. Peter! Peter! she called out. There was no answer. The only sound was Mrs. Smith quietly crying in the van. Then suddenly, Jennifer heard a voice. She walked towards the voice in the darkness and almost fell over Peter. He was lying in the road. What happened? She asked. Are you all right? The road was so slippery that I fell down, replied Peter. I think I must have hit my head, but I feel all right now. Are you sure? Let me look at it. Oh, Peter! 
Victor, where are the lanterns? asked Jennifer. One is broken, replied Peter. It is right here beside me, but the other one feels all right. Let's light it and go on, said Jennifer. This time, Peter sat in the van and held the baby in his lap. Jennifer walked in front with the lantern. She took off her shoes so she would not slip on the wet road. At last, they reached the end of the slippery mountain road. The fog was not so bad there. Jennifer jumped into the van and Mrs. Smith drove as quickly as she could. In no time at all, they reached the hospital. A doctor took one look at the baby. He told Mrs. Smith to wait and rushed away with the baby. Peter, Jennifer, and Mrs. Smith waited. No one said anything. After a while, the doctor came back. You are a very lucky woman, he said to Mrs. Smith. Your baby will be all right, but he has to stay here for a while. Oh, thank God, Mrs. Smith cried. Thank God. Then she hugged Peter and Jennifer. She was crying and laughing at the same time. If it wasn't for these brave children, my baby would have died, said Mrs. Smith. Thank you, Peter and Jennifer. We're glad we could help you, said Jennifer. We are just glad the baby is all right. The end. So that was interesting indeed. And it is so true. Sometimes the fog comes down in the mountains in Jamaica and you cannot even see your hand in front of your face. You probably remember I read a story previously about in the mountains. That story also spoke about the fog creeping in and blocking out everything. So you could easily get lost in it. So I'm glad this story had a happy ending though. The baby was all right. I hope you liked it too. If you did, please remember, click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. If it's your first time visiting the channel, I hope you will subscribe. Until next time, enjoy. Bye.